All right, in this video, we're going to be palpating longissimus. Longissimus is one of the three erectors. It is in its name long, and it's going to be covering the large percentage of the back as a whole, going all the way from sacrum and pelvis all the way up to the head in the mastoid process. Uh, we are going to section this off into three, and we're going to start off with the largest of the three sections called longissimus thoracis. Now, Unfortunately, there's multiple different sources that have different opinions on all of the attachments. So I'm going to mention a couple here, but depending on your source, you might need to add or change a couple things. So I am going to be starting with our palpation of longissimus on the posterior aspect of the iliac crest. And I'm going to round the corner and go down onto the sacral crests, including the median sacral crest. And some will also talk a little bit more about the lateral aspect as well. So this is a kind of thoracolumbar-esque attachment. So you might have that written down or some connective tissue in through the lower back. And then again, depending on your source, some will reference that attaches to all five lumbar spinous processes as well as the TV piece. So to find a transverse process in the lumbar spine, I'm going to first identify the easiest of them to get to, which is going to be off of lumbar three. So I found the SP of lumbar three. I'm moving lateral, so ultimately I'm going past the erectors, and then I'm going to take some time and sink down with a decent amount of depth in here. You might not be able to get all the way to the depth of the TVP, which is fine, um, but you are just indicating that it attaches to the transverse processes. So this would be number three. I would turn and angle my hand down towards four. I will not be able to make contact with five. I'm gonna go back up towards three. I'm gonna change my direction towards number two. And there's again a really good chance you will not be able to find number one. So a majority of this right in this area is considered the origin of longissimus. And then it's gonna to start to insert on both the ribs and the transverse process of the thoracic spine. So again, depending on your source, um, I'm gonna be going and just giving you my attachments that I usually follow, but again, you might have a slightly different one. I'm gonna be finding the lowest rib, rib number 12, and following that as close as I can towards the transverse process. And then deep to my thumb here, it's going to be approximately the transverse process for thoracic 12. And then I'm going to count up together. So rib number 11 and T11, rib number 10 with T10, 9, 8, 7. Some sources will stop your rib counting in this area, but I'm going to continue with my ribs. 6, 5, 4, and 3. So other sources will stop longissimus's insertion at rib number 3, but they will continue with your transverse process for number 2, as well as the TVP of thoracic 1. So that is every single th transverse process of the thoracic spine, plus either a lower half of your ribs or possibly all the way up to rib number three. So right as the rib starts to meet the spine um, and that transverse costal facet, that is where this longissimus muscle is going to be attaching. So as you are palpating in the erector group, oftentimes if you strum a larger muscle belly in comparison to some of the other ones, we usually attribute that to being longissimus fibers, especially in the upper lumbar spine and thoracic segment. It is a little bit more flatter and again more of a connective tissue attachment in the lower part where you might have more depth from a paraspinal. However, longissimus bulk really is through this mid part of the back. And then as we get up towards the top and the attachment starts to get smaller and smaller, it is going to thin out as it turns into other muscle tissue. So that's going to be our palpation. Now again, just to fire it off to make sure we're in the right area because I haven't done that yet. As of all of the other erectors, what I'm going to have him do is extend himself up a little bit. 
So not grasping the whole width here, but more focusing kind of on this center. You have spinalis, you have longissimus, and you have iliocostalis. You can relax back down. And again, just start to lift your head up again, right in there, that's a really good activation of it. So you can follow all the way up to our highest attachment. So again, the erectors, lateral flexion, as well as ipsilateral rotation with that extension of the trunk. And that's gonna conclude our palpation of this part. However, we will return for the other two components. Continuing on with our palpation of longissimus, we're now gonna be looking at longissimus cervicis, which is a much smaller section than the previous thoracis. Uh, I am gonna be starting at its origin, so we're gonna be identifying where the cervical seven and thoracic one spinous process are. So I'm just rotating his head and the cervical spinous process should be moving, which is right here. So that helps me to know that this is thoracic one. I'm going to palpate a little bit lateral to identify approximately where the transverse process. So TVP of thoracic one, number two, number three, four, and five. So the origin of longissimus cervicis is the transverse process of thoracic one to five. And then it's gonna be also making its way up into the transverse processes, similar to a previous muscle in iliocostalis. So I'm going to be identifying where his mastoid process is. I'm gonna drop off anterior and inferior to find the TVP of C1. Gonna go a little bit below that, pushes SCM out of the way. So here is number two, and this is the beginning of our insertion. So TVP of two, number three, four, five, and six. So along this section of his spine, and again towards the posterior aspect of those transverse processes. I'm gonna get him to do a gentle activation. So he's gonna slightly lift his head up out of the cradle and look towards me just a little bit. Good, and go back down again. And right in there, I'm starting to feel a little bit of a ropey band. Again, whether this is exactly longissimus or not, that's hard to say, but you're just going through kind of the motions of palpating from the transverse process of the upper thoracic spine into the transverse process of basically almost every cervical vertebrae, two to six in there. Again, just like the other erectors, we have extension, lateral flexion, and ipsilateral rotation. So our fiber direction is running up and into the side of the neck like so. So that's gonna conclude our palpation of cervices and we will return for capitis. We're going to be finishing off longissimus by palpating longissimus capitis. Longissimus capitis and cervicis have some overlapping origins, but capitis is actually slightly bigger in its attachments. Again, I'm going to landmark and try to find our cervical versus thoracic spinous process. So I've identified thoracic one. I'm going to move over and I'm going to repalpate the same transverse processes of the thoracic spine whether it's the upper four or upper five, again, depending on which source you're using. However, for capitis, it actually goes higher and it goes onto the articular processes of the lower cervical. So again, if I'm finding cervical seven, we have SP, the lamina, and then kind of sinking into the side to find articular processes. So there's number six, number five, and number four. So the lower articular processes as well as the upper thoracic spine TVP. So this is gonna be our origin in this pathway along here. And capitis, capitis meaning head. So instead of the neck or services attached, it is actually, we're gonna continue on with our palpation of longissimus capitis. So we've already gone through cervices and thoracis, and now we're just gonna be finishing off with capitis. First thing I'm going to be doing is trying to identify his cervical seven. So I'm taking his head and again, gently rotating it, feeling for the moving spinous process, which I've identified as this one, 
and the thoracic one does not move as much. So I've identified T1, I'm gonna move lateral, and I'm gonna find the transverse process. So cervices and capitis have some overlapping origins on these upper transverse processes of the thoracic spine. So I'm gonna have one, two, three, four, and depending on your source, five. But other than services, it actually has some attachments onto the lower C-spine. So after you found the TVP of C7 and T1, you're gonna sink into the articular process of the lower cervical. So this being C7, going a little bit higher, and now I'm into the articular process of six, five, and four. So these are our origins all along here for capitis. And then capitis meaning head. So our insertion is actually on the mastoid process of the temporal bone. So in behind the ear, dropping down, you'll be able to easily find the mastoid process. However, this is the third layer in. So you have sternocleidomastoid as well as slightly underneath that. From this direction is splenius capitis. And then underneath that is going to be longissimus capitis. So there's a really good chance you are not being able to find its fibers specifically. That being said though, I'm still gonna ask him to gently lift his head up out of the cradle and turn towards me just a little bit, good. And we are going to strum some fibers back down towards those articular processes and TVPs. There's a really good chance you are feeling splenius capitis instead of longissimus capitis, but that's okay. They are working together as synergists to do that extension and ipsilateral rotation of the head and neck. All right, and you can bring your head back down. So that is going to conclude all three sections of longissimus.